In tutorial 48, I described the rolling credits function in Title Pro 7. Those of you who watched it will have seen how unpredictable it was when any of its parameters were changed. The title simply refused to render, this fact only being realised when I played the title. None of the changes seemed to be applied. A workaround that I described involved changing a character inside the text box. This forced a render and allowed the title to play correctly. As I mentioned in the tutorial, the rolling credits function is convenient and easy to implement, notwithstanding my previous statement. However, there is another way of creating rolling credits without the need for keyframe animation. The roll and crawl effect can create rolling credits in a variety of formats. In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how the effect can be used to create a credit roll. It can also create crawling text where the text moves horizontally across the screen. The parameters for the crawling text presets are the same as for the rolling text presets, so I won't be dealing with crawling text in this tutorial. I'll start by placing a Title Pro event onto the timeline. As mentioned in tutorial 48, a little preparation is required. You need to create a text file containing all your credits. Then, to get some idea of the title length required, read through the credits at a comfortable speed and make a note of the time taken. This will cut down on the trial and error later on. I'll use the same text file I used for tutorial 48 and that's taken me about 24 seconds to read at a comfortable pace. Because the title needs to be at least 24 seconds, I'm going to change the event length to 25 seconds. Now I'll switch back to the TP7 UI and click on the timeline. This will update the NLE time value accordingly. Then I need to set the timeline length to equal that value and extend the text element to the end of the timeline. This effectively disables the pause point. Before proceeding further, I need to change the text fit mode to fit box to text. Now, with the text element selected, I'll copy the text from the text file and paste it into the text box, replacing the default text. I'll also set the position values to zero, which will put the text box in the centre of the display. Those eagle-eyed of you who watched my previous tutorial will have noticed that I spelt wrongly the name of James Clark Maxwell, one of the greatest scientists. Of course, it's Clark with an E, not Clark with an A. Unforgivable. So I'll now put that right.
If required, the text box attributes can be modified as described in tutorial 48. If the library isn't already open, open it using the function key F4. You might have to wait until it populates. I'll now click the down arrow and select Effects. Then double click Animations. Scroll down to Roll and Crawl and double click it. There are a number of presets, but the ones we're interested in are the Roll presets. I found that the Roll Slow preset gives a nice comfortable reading speed, so I'll double click that to load it onto the text element. You'll notice that the Roll and Crawl effect parameters have now been added to the Effects tab. The only setting you need to adjust here, if necessary, is the speed value. Note that positive numbers produce a scroll up function and negative numbers a scroll down function. A value of zero results in a static display. The default value for the roll slow preset is eight. If you need the roll to be faster, you should increase this number. Note that for a given timeline length, increasing the speed will cause a delay before the text appears. You'll notice with the speed at 8 and the playhead at the start of the timeline, the text is part way up the display. This is because when the speed is at 0, the text box, as shown a little earlier, will be in the same position as that set in the global tab. So, with the speed value of 8, if I need the text to start scrolling onto the display at the start of the timeline, I need to go to the Global tab and adjust the Y position coordinate so that the text box just disappears off the bottom of the display. At this point, if the roll isn't right, you'll need to force a render, as I described in tutorial 48. Now, as I mentioned, a speed value of 8 is a nice, comfortable reading setting for my credits. If your credits are longer than mine, all you need to do is change the length of the event and hence the length of the TP7 timeline. Obviously, if your reading speed is faster than mine, you can adjust the speed setting to suit. You will also need to adjust the Y position value under the Global tab so that the credits start rolling at the start of the timeline. You should also remember that if things don't look right, 
you should force a render. So, that's another way of producing a credit roll. It requires a little more tweaking than the rolling credits feature I covered in tutorial 48, but I think it behaves itself better. I've deliberately not dealt with the crawl text presets of this effect, as the settings are the same as for the roll text preset, and I wanted to keep this tutorial fairly short. I'm sure that if you master the roll text presets, you'll be able to master the crawl text presets as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Until the next time, bye for now.